I am so excited to be here with you this afternoon. This is one of my most favorite topics to talk about, which, you know, anything process related is kind of like my jam. So I am so pumped to be here. And today, I mean, really, my goal is to really teach you guys how to amplify your business growth and to supercharge your customer service processes with video. And if you don't already have a customer service SOP, I'm going to teach you a little bit about how to create one of those as well. And that's my specialty. So before I get into kind of the, the meat of it all, I'd like to introduce myself a little bit. I am CP. You heard him say, uh, this is Cheryl. Yes, my government name is Cheryl. My mama named me Cheryl. But everybody who is a part of my audience, who I love, who knows me and loves me very well, and I see some of you guys here already. So hey, CP TV years. Um, my name is CP. Everyone calls me CP. And actually, I am CP1 because I have two children whose initials are also CP. And they have absorbed that same nickname. So I've got a CP2. And now my 14 year old is CP3, which kind of makes us feel a little Star Wars y. I don't know if you guys are, are Star Wars fans, but makes me feel like we got a CP3 0. And it's funny because my 14 year old, he plays freshman football and he's the tackle. Like he's huge. And when he's on the field and he makes a great tackle, the entire stadium erupts into CP, CP. And I'm like looking around. I'm like, yeah, yeah. So we're going to get sweatshirts made CP one, two, and three and wear them because, you know, he is going to go to the NFL according to his dreams. So um, ultimately though, besides that little tidbit and fact about myself, I'm a business consultant. I'm a coach. And ultimately I work with entrepreneurs, small business owners, nonprofit leaders on creating the structures, strategies, systems, and processes, and the teams or squads in their organizations so that they can have impact in the world and achieve freedom in their lives. That's what I do. I call it my 4S Freedom Framework, and I had to go through a lot of trials and tribulations to ultimately get there, but I have gone through them because I've been doing this for over 25 years. Actually, this is my 26th year in formal business, although I tell everyone that I'm a serial entrepreneur and that I've had my own business since I was in the seventh grade. It's true. I sold noun laters on the playground. I went to Catholic school. We weren't allowed to have noun laters. Any of you guys are Catholic school folks out there, you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, I bought them for 10 cents a pack, sold them for 25 cents, made a killing, was the only kid on the playground not playing. I was making money at 12. So that's my first business. But I've personally started and grown four multi six figure and seven figure business since, since the seventh grade. And I've helped hundreds of business leaders create customer service processes in their organizations. But my all-time favorite thing to do is to make videos is to make videos for my YouTube channel, for my YouTube show. It's called CPTV, where I get to give away a ton of free trainings every single week, helping my viewers avoid all of the BS that I have been through and that I am sure many of you have been through in your entrepreneurial journey as well. So I love giving away free stuff. Training is one of those things. And because I'm so excited to be here with you guys today, I also have an amazing free gift for you. So you got to pay attention because there could be some quizzes or something attached to this free gift. I don't know. Depends on how much energy you're giving me. Webinars are hard. I love public speaking. And usually when I'm face-to-face -face with folks, I can feel the energy. So I'm going to need you guys to like give me some amens and some hell yes and all that stuff in the chats. All right. Don't hold your tongues because that energy is ultimately what gets you this free gift without me adding a quiz or something to it. Because I am a trainer by trade, y'all. You know, we like to give tests and stuff. All right. So my this is one of my most highly requested and my favorite gifts. It's especially from my VIP program clients who I help create customer service processes with and for. And that is my guide to crafting the perfect customer journey. It gives you 21 different touch points of unforgettable customer experience experiences. So you're going to want to stick around, make sure that you're paying attention and stay in all the way to the end. And I will tell you exactly where to go to get your free guide. It's amazing. Um, I change it up every single year. And this one is the one I, I haven't had to really change because the same 21 touch points are magnificent from about a year and a half ago. So you guys are going to really love that. And this guide really shows you how to create customer experiences that build lifelong relationships with your customers. It's a pretty short guide and I cover some really important areas that you need to consider customer experience. So it's an exhaustive lift of 24 touch points where you can access your customer and it gives you a few ways that you can improve your customer experiences. And I'm going to tell you where to grab it. So make sure that you stick around. Okay. So I've got a question for you. 
And I need you guys to kind of get your little, your thumbs ready, your comments ready in the chat. I need you to tell me how often do you interact with customer service via video? Now, if you feel like you've never interacted with customer service via video, I want you to put a one in the chat. If you feel like you sometimes interact with video in your customer service experiences, put a two. And if you feel like you are always interacting with video in your customer service experiences, now as a customer, as a customer, I'm talking about you being the customer, I want you to put a three, okay? I want you to put a three, one, two, or three. And I'm checking out the chat, I, I wanna see. Okay, we got, we got lots of ones, all right? And some twos, most twos, rarely. Yeah, okay. Ruben, that's no fair. You can't say that for watching your <laughs> video every day. Right. Right. As a customer. So you feel so most of you guys feel like you either never interact with video or you sometimes interact with video. So what if I told you that video as a customer in your customer service experience includes video chat? includes the video libraries that you may click into for learning, includes your video tutorials, and it includes your product demos. What if I told you that all of that is included in your customer service experience? Now, what number would you give me? A one, never, a two for sometimes, or a three for all the time? Right. Put a new number in there. Ah, yeah. I figured some threes were coming. Yeah. Yes, because guys, all of those things are a part of that customer service experience. And if you now see that the majority of that chat, almost all of you have now put threes, that means that most of you have experienced it. And you can think about in that experience exactly what your feelings have been. Because the fact is, your experience and your reaction, like I just told you, is going to be very, very similar to your customer's reaction. Because the fact is a video-centric service strategy can help you become extremely customer-centric. Whether you believe me or not, that is an absolute fact. And you might be thinking, what the heck are you talking about, CP? What the <laughs> heck is customer-centric? Well, I don't know if you've heard of those. It's a buzzword now. It's like a whole thing. It's very, very big. If you Google it, I'm not just making it. It's not a CPism, although I am known to come up with my own CPisms. And if I do, I will let you know that they're a CPism. And then I want you to make them go viral. Okay. I want you to repeat them all the time. Use them, especially against your children. That's usually where my CPism come from the most, but it's, I didn't make it up. It's called customer centricity. It, it really is called customer centricity. It's like huge. And exactly what it is, is it actually focuses on creating customer positive experiences at every stage of the customer journey, which is essential for driving your customer loyalty. Now, the key words in this is positive experiences at every stage of the entire journey. OK, and that means that we have to begin to wrap our minds around the fact that your customer's journey doesn't just begin when they make a purchase from you. That is not when it begins. It actually includes them being a visitor on your Web page, your, your, in your social media, all the way to becoming a lead, meaning they've clicked some link and they've come into your business in some way, shape or form. It includes them being a prospect because now they're warm and they're kind of pulling down your free stuff and maybe they purchased a low ticket offer or something like that of yours. And then they ultimately say, yes, become a true customer of yours, meaning give you some money. And then ultimately they become a fan. And that is when your customer is all in. That Really, what I just painted for you is the customer journey. And you have to figure out a way, being an entrepreneur, being a business owner, how to make sure that customer centricity is your focus throughout this entire journey, okay? And that is exactly what I'm going to help you with today, all right? What is customer centric? If you don't know what it is, then I'm going to guess and say to myself that, you probably need a customer-centric transformation. It's like a makeover. It's like a makeover, except it's a transformation. And so I'm going to give you a transformation today, all right? So what is a customer-centric transformation? Well, it's kind of undergoing a, it's undergoing a transformation which requires you to add 
differentiated capabilities and processes across your customer's lifecycle journey. All those steps that I just talked to you about, all of which supports the goals of maximizing the product and service value that you're giving them, improving their satisfaction and increasing their retention. You want them to keep coming back, right? We all agree that it's important. So how do you make this transformation? How do you make this transformation? Well, it's really simple. You have to make sure that you've got the four C's, the four C's of customer centricity. And I want you to go ahead and screenshot this, write it down, whatever you need to do, all right? Because customer centricity, the four C's are customer value, convenience, communication, and cost efficiency. You have to implement the four C's of customer centricity. So you got to make sure that these four C's are completely entrenched throughout your entire customer service processes and their journey. Every single time you touch your audience, you have to make sure that they're getting value, that it's convenient, that you are communicating clearly, and that it is creating cost efficiency for both you and for them. All right. So I want you to make sure that you make a note of it, because the reality is the fact is 68 percent of customers say that they are willing to pay more for products and services from a brand known to offer good customer service experiences. So what does that mean? If you've been sitting around at home thinking to yourself, oh, my God, I can't figure out what I should be pricing my stuff at. I just don't want to outprice myself. Oh, my God, is what my price? Is it too expensive? Am I charging too much? If you're thinking that, I want you to know that you ain't got to worry about charging too much, honey. You ain't got to worry about that because I just told you that 68% of all consumers say that they are willing to pay more if you treat them good. If you are customer centric, they'll pay more, right? You ever heard the phrase, get what you pay for? You ever heard the the phrase Louis Vuitton, okay? People pay a lot for that same freaking purse that's made in that same freaking factory as the Walmart purse that I picked up the other day. Kind of looked like I I did. I picked it up. I didn't pick it up for myself though because I believe in paying for value, y'all. I didn't pick it up for myself. I I actually got it from my niece because, you know, she's at that age where she's like wanting purses and things and I am that aunt, all right? We're going to totally make her a total diva. But that value is there. People pay for what they want. They pay for value. They pay for communication. They pay for convenience and they pay for cost efficiency. And customer retention rates, you can increase them, believe it or not. If you increase, increasing customer retention rates by just 5% can increase your profits between 25 and 95%. And that's that's a long, dramatic pause. And speaking, that's what we call a long, dramatic pause, because I want you to hear what I just said. You know what your current profit margins are. If I told you that you could increase them by 95%, just by increasing your customer retention rates by 5%, would you begin to say, I need to be more customer centric? Would customer centricity become a focus for you? And believe this or not, investing in new customers is between five to 25 times more expensive than retaining your existing ones. That's a known fact, right? It just costs more money, more time, more effort, more stress, more heartache. Creating all those TikTok videos, y'all, Costs a lot more of that stuff to get new customers than it does to retain your existing ones. And believe it or not, 78% of customers have backed out of a purchase due to poor customer experiences. That is directly related to your customer centric centric customer centric processes, right? So with all of that being said, I want to go back to that original conversation that we were having. And that all of you guys kept putting like threes in. And that is including video in your customer service process just creates a better customer service experience. It's just a fact, 100%. Video in your customer service journey SOPs will nail all four of those Cs. It will nail all four of those Cs. It will create more customer value. People retain 90% of what a video says as compared to 15% of reading text on a web page or reading text in an email. So the value of your product or service increases because if you use it to onboard your client, 
right? If you use it in your facts section, if you use it to teach your client how to use your product or service, as you use it as a demo, you are going to ultimately increase the value for that customer. And remember what we just talked about those four C's, you're going to be creating that customer centricity in your organization. Videos are also known to be more convenient. They're just more convenient to watch and consume than reading a bunch of text. They just are. Um, they, they engage more senses. They create like a wider range of learning styles. They impact those. Not everyone absorbs what they read, but everyone does absorb what they watch. Otherwise, Barbie <laughs> would not be doing what Barbie's doing right now, y'all. I'm just saying, right? I'm just saying. And video just improves communication across the board. Video provides clarity and shows tone and intention, unlike text. When customers understand your products or service better, they're more confident in it. They are more likely to recommend it to someone else. They're more likely to issue respect. They're more likely to give you reviews. They're more likely to do all of those things. So if you are finding in your business journey right now, as a business owner and as an entrepreneur, that you're just not getting that type of response from your customers, I'm going to encourage you to maybe incorporate some video into what you're doing. I'm just saying it's going to make it easier for you and it's going to make it easier for that. You don't believe me? You ain't got to believe me. I'm just CP. I want you to believe these top brands who are using video in their customer service processes and have been for years. Ikea, put in the chat right now if you own some piece of furniture that you put together from Ikea right now in your house. How many of you guys are sitting in an Ikea desk right now? I literally have three Ikea bookshelves in my office as we speak, right? Everybody knows Ikea. And Ikea, long before the pandemic, long before video became a thing, they were toying with ways that they could add a personal touch to the customer service experience. So they created the Samson app, right? If you guys are Ikea customers regularly, you probably have used this app. If not, and you are an Ikea customer, check it out. It offers you support via video. It will troubleshoot with interior design help. It will give kitchen follow-up. It will support your home solutions. And in some instances, it will actually show you and walk you through how to put all that furniture together, y'all. Did you know that? Did you know that? That's that Samson app. So make sure you tap into it. Also, Lowe's. I am really Home Depot loyal, but that's because of my dad. That has nothing to do with Lowe's being less than Lowe's. I'm just saying my dad is a Home Depot where it's kind of like the Cleveland Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers in our house. If someone says, go to Lowe's, I'm like, how dare you bring up the L word in this house? But Lowe's, I love, and I'm thinking about really moving it because Home Depot got to step up their game because they don't have the Lowe's pros job site. And that is a video-based customer service app that allows contractors and interior designers and customers to interact with one another that Lowe's came out with. And then we all love Nike. If you guys have at all used Nike, buy Nike, um, wear Nike, they have a club training app and they actually were charging for this app. And then during the pandemic, they removed all the costs associated with it so that people would actually have access to like Nike trainers via app. And so they are all using video. Those are just a few of the brands. I could name a million others, but those are some of the ones that are using video. So if they're doing it, I want you to do it as well. And it doesn't have to cost you a lot of money. It doesn't. It's, it can be super cheap. I'm going to get into that here shortly. But now I really want to give you like five ways. So here are five ways. Get your pens and papers ready. Get your little screenshot things ready because these are five ways that I want you to consider adding video to your customer service SOP. Now, one of the things I know that you might be thinking is CP, you keep telling me to use video. I hate video. That might be an objection. I hate video. I don't like to record video unless I look good on video. I'm afraid of video. Um, all of those things. We'll get into that. Just table those things. Put them in the chat and, I, and I'll give you some tips on how to overcome them because that's probably the biggest pushback that I get when I tell people to use video. But these five ways allow you to use video in your own way. You can use your face or you cannot use your face. It doesn't matter. So these are all five ways that I totally recommend you begin to add video to your customer service process. There are so many, but these are my top five. These are the ways that I automatically have incorporated video into my customer service SOP. All right. Way number one, 
Video is in my customer onboarding. You need to include video in your customer onboarding process. Why? Because a smooth customer onboarding process helps a customer understand your product and how you'll solve their problems. And it teaches them how to get the job done. The number one reason that customers come back to you over and over again, or will give you a good testimonial, or will give you some social proof, or will tell someone to come visit you is because they've actually used what you sold them. So for me, I do coaching, consulting, and I have a ton of digital courses. If you are out there and you've got digital products that you sell, tell me in the chat, say, yes, CP, amen, CP. I do digital products. One of the biggest concerns that you're going to have is how do I get people to actually go through these courses and watch them, right? How do I get them to watch them so that they can experience the transformations that my courses are supposed to create for them? And a big way to do that is to actually onboard them appropriately. And in that onboarding process, you have to use video. You have to get them used to what they're going to experience. You have to guide them through that path of what they're going to be able to do inside of your digital courses. The right process, the right onboarding process prevents your customers from churning, meaning requesting refunds and canceling due to either not understanding how to use your product or not understanding the value that your product or service is bringing to them. Now, I need you to keep it real. I'm a keep it real kind of girl. I'm gonna keep it real kind of girl. And I, I need to see your faces for this. All right, I need to see your faces. Please turn on your cameras because I need to see your faces. I just need a nod or, or, or a raise. It's okay if you're, you know, in the bathroom right now. It's all right. We won't judge you. I just want to uh, chime in really quick here too. Yeah, go ahead. DP, um, the guys, if you're in professional services as well, like real estate or mortgage, your business is identical what we're, to what we're talking about. You may not have a digital product to deliver to someone, but you have a service and you have your own business and it's treated exactly the same as what we're discussing. And you guys, it's just as important to turn them from a uh, lead into that fan. You want to create a great customer service, a great relationship, but you guys should already know this because your business is relationship based. And many, many, many digital products and coaches and consultants, not as relationship based, even as real estate. So guys, this should all be second nature and you should be taking a closer look at what does your formula for your customer service actually look like? She's providing some really great tips here, but make sure you guys have probably at least these five. If you're oh my God. isn't in that onboarding, like, what are you doing? <laughs> if you are a real estate, if you're in real estate, I like to call you American dream consultants. <laughs> I mean, you know, like th that's who you are. You, you help people live the American dream, right? Buy their first home. You're a consultant helping them through that. But I need to see your faces. How many of you guys have a documented step-by-step -step customer or new client onboarding process already in place in your organizations? No, not yet. Not yet. Is it on your list of things to do? Yes. Yeah. All right. I just wanted to see it because it is one of those things that we spend a lot of time trying to get new customers and market to new customers, don't we? We spend all, we got all kinds of strategies and step-by-step -step content calendars and social media scheduling things, but we don't oftentimes take the time to map out what happens once someone says yes without realizing that you can do a lot less social media posting and ads and things like that because the referrals will flow in. So I would totally encourage you, if you haven't already done it, and this is what I do every year, I'm getting ready to go on mine. This is, this is a secret CP hack. It's not even in the presentation. I do a CEO retreat on an annual basis. On my YouTube channel, I got a whole video that I've done like a whole thing on the, C the CEO retreat. I take it every year. I'm actually usually take it at the end of August and September, but right now I'm scheduled to take it the second week in October. And I go away for a whole week. I lock myself in a hotel room. I put my out of office on as if I'm at a conference and I work on my business. And the number one thing I do every single year is review, refine, tweak and create my processes, my SOPs and the processes in my business. And then I spend the whole next year implementing them and tweaking them. And then at the end of the following year, I do them again. So even if you don't have a whole week, you can do, because in your mind right now, I saw your faces. You're like, WTF, did you say work. a week? <laughs> did you say a week? Take a day, go down the street. When I first started my business, I used to just go down the street and, and go on a Friday, check in on a Friday and check out on a Sunday. And it allows you to work around the clock in your pajamas. No one's bothering you. No kids, no dogs. 
no nothing. And now we got DoorDash too. I didn't, I, I, you don't even got to leave to eat. Go and just map out this onboarding process that I'm telling you about and figure out a way to incorporate some video in that. So I, I wanted to see how many of you guys has your onboarding process. Um, it, it's probably the number one process that I create in my VIP program with my with my coaches and, and, and consulting clients. We sit and we map out this, this onboarding because it's one of those simple things. So I want to give you guys an example. I want to share with you kind of what my customer onboarding process looks like. I'm going to show you. Real, real quick, CP2, while you're getting that ready, just want to tell mm -hmm. the team, like, guys, we, we very similar to what she just described. We go through this process as well. We have our little automated email sequence that happens, but then we have what our uh, what our team's actually doing, you know, right? We're trying to call people, text people, email them, get them into their demonstrations, get them into the live trainings. And so we're constantly revising and sharpening this process up. So we see, okay, look, last month we had so many leads that did not become appointments yep. or customers or clients how can we go increase that rate and so this is not like, like i love how she's doing that and then refining it throughout the year i think ours is maybe every six months or something it, it, I, I know one time we went with a whole year without refining it we built the workflow process and we just said okay it's there and then okay and now we, we're like okay back coaching cap back on how do we improve? Like, great. We're happy with our results, but we always can do better. So put the coaching cap back on. If you have a coach, if you had someone you're working with, what might they say? And they're going to say, go back and look at what you're currently doing and refine that. So guys, this takes our whole team to, to, to do this process. It's me, it's Ruben, it's Rob, it's Ina, it's everyone in there. And we're talking about what customers are saying, what those experiences are like. And that's how we're refining the process. So you're either working with someone, with an expert, or with a coach, you know, someone that's had done this before, or maybe you've done it yourself several times, or you've taken some courses, gotten some support there. Um, I would say at least the first time you guys are building a robust journey, you're going to pay close attention to something like what CP is providing today. So you guys at least have some framework and some guideline for how to really build a great SOP for your customer service. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and I'm just going to give you like a snapshot. So this isn't my formal SOP because like what Ruben said, you, you got to document it. So it's okay in your mind if you have it in your head, <laughs> but that doesn't really help, right? If it's in your head, because you might not be following it. And it's also creating a lot of extra time for you unnecessarily. You can't really automate it. The key to freedom is automation, right? And you can't automate if you don't have it documented. You're not in this business to work like a slave. Trust me, I did that back in the 90s. <laughs> that's that's so 90s, okay, it's so 90s. <laughs> so this is exactly what my workflow looks like. This is our checklist. It's actually our workflow that's in our system. And as you can see, it's got 11 steps. So this is an 11 steps in this process. It's a workflow. It's also a funnel. It, my team goes in. They change my product status after the workflow started. It sends an email titled, hey, CP, it's time to get to work. Um, I also send them a VIP project. This is exactly what, if you become one of my VIPs, what you will go through. Um, I see Tay smiling because she actually <laughs> has this right now. We like mapped this out a, few, a, a month or so ago in her business. Um, then it sends them an email, just checking in. She's probably like on step eight right here, right? Because um, And it's so awesome because your clients are receiving these. And I can tell you in 11 of these steps, there is video in four of them. Video is in four of them. And Tay's like, really? Did I see video? And Tay now has gotten the hang of it because she'll hit reply to my video and send me a video reply back. But I'm going to tell you the secret, too, because you guys know I use Dove for that. You know how I use Dove for that. She she loved it. She's like, oh, my God, I love this video thing. It, the, the, the results are raving results. But this is just an example of what that workflow looks like and what you need to map out in your business. So the second area that I want you to make sure you are incorporating video is your product service training. All right. And when I say your product or service training, I mean, if you want to make your product or your demo, how to use your product, how to use your service, how to make sure they're maximizing what you've incorporated into their business, um, all of those things. Like, so if you're a real estate agent, let me give you an example, because I, I work with real estate agents as well. You're like I said, you're, you're American Dream Consultants. You want to incorporate into once a client has sold a property or once someone has come to you and said that they want to sell a property, the perfect first step in your onboarding process is to send them a welcome to my family email with a video that says, here's what the next steps are. 
Why? Because when someone secures you, the first question that comes to their mind, and this is just me being a homeowner on multiple times, and I, I, I didn't just own one home, I've owned multiple, and every single time I work with a real estate agent, and my very thought was, oh my God, what's next? What do I do next? Right? I just signed up with you. I just signed that little thing that says, yes, you have control over my life, my American dream. I just gave you my control. And now I want to know immediately what the next steps are. And it's a great quick five minute video that can say, what's going to happen is I want you to begin to do some things. I want you to begin to declutter. Click below, grab my checklist on some specific things that you need to do in your home over the next two weeks in order to declutter. Because we need to prepare your home for photographs and pictures. You see how that goes? So complete. this is a product or service training. This isn't just onboarding. You are training them on how to use your services. You might also give them a portal. I know my, my real estate agent has a portal for me to log in and see all kinds of stuff. I needed her to walk me through that portal. So a screen share that walks them through how to access the customer portal. If you are actually delivering a product, walking your customer through how to use it. If you are a hairstylist, walking the customer through how to maintain their hair. If you're a consultant, walking the customer through how to make sure that they're utilizing the advice that you're giving. If you're a coach, holding your, your client accountable after your coaching call. All of those things are a part of that product and service training. So the next time you need to walk your customer through how to use your product or service or prepare for your service, make a video and add it to your service process. Add it to your service process. Okay. The number three way, facts videos. Guys, frequently asked question videos are at the top of the list of things that people love to see video related to them. So you guys know what a fact question is, right? It's frequently asked questions. So video is short, it's informative, um, and it can be repurposed and used on social media and in your marketing efforts. I just want to point that out. I'm not in the business of recording one video and never using it again. Darius, I can see the exact Yeah, no, I love this. So like guys, when you're when you're listening to your customers, right? We're we're hearing their feedback, their questions, their concerns, their comments, and we've gotten pretty decent about this. When we have something come in, we say, "Okay, well, is more than one person going to have this question?" Excellent. Now is an opportunity for us to record, make a little article, put it in our help section, but then also post that. That becomes fuel for our social for new leads. So these are opportunities and then using the power of video, it actually becomes an opportunity for new business as well and to help future clients. Because each one of these use cases she's providing you guys is what we call evergreen, where yeah. it's, it's usefulness never goes away. As long as you're doing business, that video is still useful to you and your clients. So each of these guys, like I said, it's an evergreen investment where it's not like an advertisement or something. It gets just shown a little bit and it's gone. Uh, it's there forever and you can recycle it and save time and make new customers every single time it's used. So, and, and I love what you said, Darius, because our, we have an internal, so I, I work with clients to create their internal facts process, yeah. their internal process. And ours is very similar. So we get questions from all kinds of areas. We get them inside of our courses. We get them on, in our DMS on all of our right. social, we get them in our YouTube questions. We get them in our help desk. And then I will also get them text message and emails and everything <laughs> like that to me. So we yeah. have, and this is just an example of something that you guys can use internally yourself. We use Slack. I don't know how many of you guys use Slack, but we use Slack. So we have a channel on our Slack called hashtag, because all of the Slack channels start with hashtag, right? Yeah. Hashtag facts. So whoever on my team is receiving this fact, this question, they screenshot it copy and paste it into the facts feed in our Slack. Love it. And they will put at Cheryl if it's something that I need to create a video for. So at the end of every week, when I'm wrapping up my week, I've got time blocked off of my calendar every single week that at the end of the day for customer service focus. It's called customer service focus time. And it is how I respond and create the facts videos for those questions that are in our Slack feed, the questions that have come directly to me from customers and clients, the questions from my clients that have hit reply to my videos, that's the time that I use to dedicate. And so once I do that, I post that in that Slack feed, then my team takes it, they get it all edited up because it doesn't have to be perfect. They get it edited up or they don't edit it if it seems authentic. Sometimes they like to give me that, it looks authentic CP thing. <laughs> yeah. 
whatever. Then they take them and they store them in a file folder, our Dropbox file that says facts. And I can tell you that our facts folder is full of frequently asked questions. And guess what happens when I'm on vacation for two weeks and don't feel like recording no content? My team goes in there, they grab a few, they post them on our stories. It's now social media content and it drives so much interaction because it encourages people to comment as well. So that's kind of our internal process. And you got to create one yourself internally as well. Step by step, what am I going to, even if you don't have a team, do not get it twisted. I'm not sitting here thinking that everybody on this call has this massive team. I started out just myself as well. And I still had the same facts process. I still had an SOP for this, even though I was the one doing most of the steps. And then I was able to hire to that step based upon what I needed. So the people always say to me, how did you know who to add to your team? Well, I've got SOPs for everything inside of my business. And so my SOP tells me which step, who's responsible for that step. Any SOP step in my business that says team CP, that is either a current or a future team member. And so I can pull any SOP and create a job description in, in an instant because all the bullet points I need, I need to put in that job description is a step and a sale and a process internally or externally for my business. So that's also a little kind of CP hack that I, I went share. through the, the same exact things there, CP. Five, five years ago when we started this business, I was the person in the chat listening and then going and creating the content. So it was just the the one one guy. OK, put it in the Slack. That's my to do list for later. Yep. So. Um, you guys are perfectly capable of doing that yourselves as well. And I encourage you to do so because uh, you guys need fuel. You need fuel and you need your FAQs answered. So there's not any reason uh, that this shouldn't happen. Absolutely. And facts are mandatory for every good high converting sales page, right? Every good high converting sales page, landing page, if you're selling something, if you're trying to get a new customer, you got to have a digital page, no matter what you do, I don't care who you are, what you're selling, you got to have a digital page because that's where people are going first in order to make their buying decisions. And your frequently asked questions videos on that digital page in that sales sequence is going to increase your conversion rates tenfold. Trust me. That's that's a whole separate tip. That's like, I didn't do a customer service show. That's about selling, right. making some money, <laughs> okay, making some money. But yeah, so the fourth way that you can use video is in personalized responses. Now, this particular step in the process was specifically unexpected when I was using Dub. Like I had no idea that Dub was going to impact my life in the way that it has because of my personalized responses. And I just decided, let's just try it this way. Because first of all, to keep it real with you, the whole reason why I did that is because I hate typing. I hate typing. I suck at it. I had I, I had two math classes because I was a math geek in high school. So I never got to take that typing class in high school. So I am a what you call a, you know, pseudo, I'm a fake typer. Like I have to look at the keys, but when I don't look, I realize I'm not looking and then I freak out and I mess up. So I hate typing. I also don't like texting. I'm one of those voice to text people. I'm a voice to type person. I'm a voice to text people. So I was tired of responding to my customers and my clients with emails. You can't tell the tone. You can't see, you know, the personality, the passion, the energy. And so I was like, I, I need to be able to create little videos. So at first I was doing them with like Vimeo and then I was putting them like these links and all this stuff. It just wasn't giving me what I wanted. When I say use them in personalized responses, I'm not necessarily saying that you have to use it for every single customer or client. But what I am saying is that you need to use them for some. And I don't care if you designate this particular customer service process to high ticket or high paying or whatever it is. This is simply a process by which um, I'm going to share more with you later. I'm going to give you an, exa an example of exactly the impact that this particular one can have. But it's a basic customer service process that I have in my business, and it, it involves personalized video responses. So like I said, my team puts the questions, or if I get a question, and I spend Fridays responding to my customers via video, and they are personalized responses. And my customers love it, um, and they respond to me via video. And the responses that I get help with social media content creation, number one, because we're always creating content, but it also naturally gets social proof and testimonials from them without me even asking. And that is the golden nugget because 
If you're anything like me and you've ever experienced hating asking for testimonials, not quite sure how to ask for them, you're not really good at getting them, you know you need them, you need them, you want them, you want Amazon reviews, you want five star just like everybody else, but you don't know how to ask. If you start personalizing your responses to your customers, they will naturally give them back to you without you having to ask. It is absolutely imperative and successful in the business. So this is a great golden nugget. And the I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show them just a really quick example of that, okay? Mm -hmm. Like 30 seconds here. Just want to show you guys just how simple this is, uh, just from a, a technological standpoint. So you guys can all see my Gmail here, right? Well, all we're talking about is instead of coming in and typing an email, you can simply click a little button and record a video for your prospect just like this. So in fact, when you guys will see later, uh, we would absolutely encourage you guys to start a video like this. So that way when they open their email, it's gonna include some information just like this. So I'll just show you really quick how the whole thing works. So I'd say, hey CP, got some information for you. You'll find some buttons below. Let me know what you think. So very generic what I said, but you guys will see there instantly all those elements that we're just talking about, the ability for them to respond with a video, all those things are connected. So instantly that video, personalized video message with the ability for them to send a video back to you or chat with you or book a time, all that happens instantly. So that's just in a nutshell what we're talking about and, and how simple it can be. It's, it's faster than typing an email, in fact, when you uh, get down to it. So. Oh, it's, it's, it's life-changing guys. It totally is. It yeah. changes the whole thing. And, and that brings us to that, to that fifth thing that we were just talking about, right? Getting that feedback in those customer testimonials, collecting that. And are, anybody in here, tell me in the chat, I want to see, are you guys good, mediocre, bad at getting customer testimonials and social proof? Have you come up with your strategy? I want to see, have you come up with your, your, your customer feedback strategy? Is anyone in here like rock star? You're good. Always need more. All right. Harry's good. Brenda's good. Derek's good. <laughs> David. I wonder what an actual, cause like, I think, cause you know, like when it comes Almost to like good. sales and demos, like a good close rate is 40%. So of your guys' closed clients, what percentage of them are giving you that social proof we're looking for? And then let's let's like give it a ballpark. Like I'd say 40% is, is decent, right? If you got about half of your customers to leave some social proof, then that's pretty good. If you're getting 10, 25%, that's probably not enough. So good. All right. We've got some decent numbers. 70%. Yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty nice. Yeah. Good. Is it because you have like a spelled out process to gather them? Like you've got a step-by-step -step process that you automatically put in place in order to gather them? Or is it just that the customer service is so amazing they want to go do it on their own? <laughs> right, that's that's the goal. Guys, right, that's the goal. I'm right, interested no. to know, like I'm interested to know, is it because you got a process? Because if you've got a process, it be, if you're getting 70%, I wonder if you incorporate some video, just do a little test for the month of October. Add a video to you, that process that you have already. Right. And see if that 70% goes up to 90. Right. Especially if you make it easy for people to respond, right? So just, just test it out. If you don't have a process yet, then, you know, I would probably say spend the rest of September mapping out what that looks like. Even if it's just four or five steps, what you're going to do post sale to get that feedback or in the middle of a sale to get that feedback um, and, and see how that goes. Because that'll be really interesting. Because testimonials are obviously one of the most effective forms of social proof. Everybody knows that. There was a study done by Bright Cove that found that video testimonials will increase your conversion rates on the sales side by up to 80%. So even though you might be good in your Facebook group at taking those screenshots and putting them somewhere or, or using them or turning them into like Canva posts or turning them into images, video testimonials increase the conversion rates by 80%. And I find myself doing the exact same thing. Like even when I'm purchasing stuff on Amazon, I tend to look at the reviews. I don't know how many of you guys do this. I tend to look at the reviews with video. Right. I've got questions like, is this big enough or will this work? Or, you know, how does this, it, it, what is it going to look like when it comes out? Unboxing videos are like my favorite thing to look at, especially on Amazon. And also the other second place I'll go is YouTube. I go right to YouTube and I look for a video of someone reviewing a product before I buy it. 
Raise your hand in, in, in the comments if you do the exact same thing or raise your hand. In the Always. I, I do it every single time. I'm like, let me go on YouTube and see. See how this skincare is. See what this product, see if anybody's reviewed this. Because that video testimonial is critical. So if you make the request via video and you're able to do what you were just shown to do, they will click that reply with video and send it back to you in video. Right. I'd like to re-ask the question. So now that we're, we're you guys are we're talking about video testimonial, what percentage of your clients would you say you're getting video testimonial back from? Pro probably less percentage, right? And technically, it's be, be because of the technical requirements, right? Most people don't have an ability to come figure out how to record their own software and then upload it to you and give it to you in a usable form. So there we go. Yeah, some different percentages there. I figured as much. So guys, using what I just showed you there, they don't have to download or sign up or install anything. They literally just click one link and then one button, and they're going to be able to send that testimonial back to you. So uh, that, that's what we're talking about here. Yes. And, and if you guys look in the chat, like Brenda, Brenda literally said she is 90% because she has a process. So if you don't, if some of you that said you were fair at getting them, that first step is obviously creating that process, creating the SOP. And that's what we're going to get into right now. I want to, I want to walk you through the steps to actually creating a video centric customer service SOP real quickly, five steps. Five steps to creating a video-centric customer service SOP. So get your screenshot ready, right? So let's talk about a quick and easy way. Step number one, map out your process and your workflow. You got to map it out. I map mine out by myself, even with my, with my clients, with my VIP program folks. Good old whiteboard. And I like a whiteboard because you can erase. You know, you can erase it and do it again. Like, you know, some people are like, oh, I like to do it in a computer. Maybe I'm old school. I, I surrounded myself with whiteboards. If you want to get me something for Christmas, guys, in case you're wondering, a good whiteboard would go a long way. Call me weird if you want to. I'm, I'm a whiteboard nerd. But map out the actual process or your workflow. Map out the funnel. Map out the workflow. Step two, after you've mapped it out, go through each of those steps and identify which steps you can just plop a video into. So if you find yourself sending an email message, let's just say, that is like, long, a really long email, that is a sign that that might be a good step to plop a video into. All right. Step number three is to secure your technology. You got to secure your tech. We've been talking about an amazing op um, option, but I'm going to give you some, my three that I use in my customer service video centric processes. Um, obviously, Dove is one of them, but you got to secure your step and your tech in step three. And I always say, get your tech. Some people do this differently. Like you do it the opposite. When I'm working with folks and we're mapping out these processes, sometimes they've already got all this tech that they're working with. And the number one thing I find is that they're not using the tech. <laughs> like, oh, I got all these systems and I'm not using it. And the reason is because you bought the tech before you mapped out the process. The process will tell you what tech you need. The process will also tell you what you need to look for in the technology. The first step every single time, guys, is to map out the workflow. Then it's going to tell you who you need to hire, what technology you need to buy, what assets you need to create, what emails you need, what videos you need. It's going to tell you everything else. So then you secure your tech. That's step three. Don't secure your tech first. Otherwise, you're probably wasting money. Then create your content. Create your content, your assets. I call them process assets. That's your questionnaires, your workflow, your, your emails, your videos, your scripts. Create all of that stuff. And then step five is to automate everything. Automate everything. That is going to change your life. You are not running a business to be working a job. That is not what you are doing. That is not why you started this business. If you started the business to work a job, then you are just definitely paying too many taxes for no reason. Because you can go work for somebody else and work a job and, and not have half the damn headaches, right? right? Right. So automation is what turns your business. Processes, workflows, automation is what turns your business into freedom. My loves, that is what does it. Okay, you've been looking for the solution. It's that. That is your five-step process. And again, if you've got to find the tech, these are my three tech tools. 
that I recommend you find. And I'm not going to give you specific ones other than Dub because you might have your own favorite email provider, but you need one of those. Obviously, you need an email provider. You can't even really use Dub all that great if you don't have an email provider. So you need an email provider. Then you definitely need Dub. Trust me, it is the only one of its kind. I what I get so I, I'm going to share something with you guys. <laughs> I can't even tell you how awesome it was to find up. And I get email messages from brands and sponsorship requests. I probably get like six or seven of them every single day because of my YouTube channel. All kinds of technology tools. They're emailing me, let's partner, let's partner, let's partner. And Robert emailed me and I was like, oh God, another one of these damn things. Like, what do they want? And I actually have somebody on my team whose job it is to like vet all of these things because I do not recommend technology tools unless I use them in my business or I have used them. It's like one requirement for every single one that reaches out to me. So if you're on my YouTube channel and you see me recommend a tool, it's because I use it in my business in, in a practical way. And I always have them vetted. I'm like, tell them the first step I need to use it for 30 days. But the one thing that made me actually, I scheduled the appointment with Rob, which I never do. I never, ever, ever, ever do that. I clicked the button because he had a freaking video, a GIF video in the email. And I clicked on it. And at the bottom, it said, reply with video. I said, oh, I, I've been looking for you. Like I've literally been looking for this because I needed the ability to be able to put a video in there, but have people respond to me via video. And there wasn't anything else out there. I'm an old school. I don't know if you guys have ever used Bomb Bomb before or heard of Bomb Bomb. Back in 2015, I was using Bomb Bomb. I was using <laughs> video in my email because I had a sales team of 65 independent contractors. All right. And I was using Bomb Bomb to communicate with them because again, I hate typing. And, and but Bomb Bomb, you couldn't reply with video and it, it didn't put like the GIF in there. All you could do is put a link in there. It just I'm telling you, Dub is absolutely amazing for that. And then you also need a customer service platform. You really do for your customer service. So if you don't have, um, I use Freshworks, Freshdesk for mine. Um, it, I love it. It creates a ticketing system. It allows me to set customer service standards for my clients. And, and as I've added to my customer service team, I can track them. I can train them. Um, we can do all kinds of stuff in there. And you can auto plug your Dub video messages <laughs> into there as well. So that makes it a really good one. So. I want to give you an example. I'm going to actually give you right now my customer response process step by step. My customer response process step by step. And then I'm going to give you an example of kind of what it creates. Now, I want you to see my face when I do this one because I think it's important. All right. So here it is. Step number one. An inquiry comes into my help desk. Let's just go with the help desk. I get them from different places, but an inquiry comes into my help desk because Fresh Desk is also tied to my social media DMs. So they all come into one place. All right. Oh, thank you. I'm like spotlighted. Awesome. All right. So an inquiry comes into the help desk. My team evaluates that. Step number two is my team evaluates it and they determine if we have a canned response that's already been created that they can send. They go right there. So we have all of our facts videos cataloged by topic right? By keyword. And then just do a quick search and in fresh desk, it pulls up everything that's by that keyword. If there isn't anything there, then they triage it. They triage the complex or detailed inquiries into three buckets. There's three buckets, content ideas, facts, and a CP response. And if it's a CP response, then the content ideas get added to our content idea bank. I've got a whole list so I can create YouTube videos from it. The facts get added to our facts log on our Slack channel. And then the ones that are CP response, they hit, uh, they hit reply all to the client. They copy me and it said, they usually say, thank you so much for your request. We're looping CP and this is something she's going to want to get back to you on. So it, it ends up in my email. Now I have a filter in my Outlook. When those come in, they automatically put in the subject line. Um, the subject line says, thanks, customer name, looping in CP. So I have a filter in my Outlook that automatically takes those that say looping in CP and it, it filters them into a folder in my Outlook. So they don't really, they don't really clog up my, you know, my email. I don't get, I get email overwhelm. I don't know if you guys have ever gotten that, but I get email overwhelm. So it, I don't even see them until I'm ready to see them because I filter them automatically. Then once they go in, the email, it's, it, it, um, it hits my inbox, then it gets auto-sorted into my customer response folder in Outlook. Then on Fridays, 
and I do it on Fridays. Um, I have blocked in my schedule. I am a time blocking person. Um, I, ha- I have a whole time management boot camp that I that I put people through. Um, so I have a digital. It's crazy. It's intense. But because I've got six children, I don't think I mentioned that. I got six kids. Six kids, y'all. Two dogs. A business. A husband. Girlfriends. Nails. Eyebrows. All those things are incorporated into this schedule. So I block off my calendar for 60 minutes. 60 minutes is all I need. Sometimes I have to take 90 because I get a lot of them. But 60 minutes at the end on Friday, at the end of every day, I have it blocked off of my calendar, customer focused time. So nobody can schedule anything. And all I do is open up that folder that says need CP response. I hit reply all. I record my dub video. I plop it in there. Hit go. It automatically updates the ticket in my system and closes it out for my for my customer service team so they know it's done and it doesn't need to be triaged anymore. And then that video they receive, they download it and they plop it into our fax folder again. And then they, they title it out and then it becomes a part of that search process and it kind of becomes that cycle all over again. So that gives you an example of what my customer direct response process step-by-step is that we use and how we use that video. And this is something... Now, you can absolutely build in your own organization. I mean, you, what the systems that you have and the tools and the little nuances, like the emails that go and the messages and the filters, those are all things that you can work through. But in general, it's very similar to what you're going to want to experience. And if you don't have a team, then your, your system, your customer service system, which is why I say that that's a good thing to have, can also do the exact same thing. So let me give you an example. When I do this, of the type of responses I get. And I just want you to see this video because I think it's it it, it, it flabbergasted me the very first time I, I did it um, and that I used it. I was just like totally freaked out by it. Um, so I want to make sure that you guys get a chance to see it because I was like, I was, I was onto a gold mine, right? I, I was I was literally experiencing a gold mine. So let me show you guys. What Go I'm ahead and t- turn up your volume, guys. She's gonna she's gonna play a video for you and we want you to to hear the message. It's really powerful. Let's see here. What am I sharing? Let's see. Oh, what am I? Sharing? Yeah, that was the presenter yeah. mode. All right. We're in screen two. Okay. Okay. There it is. You guys seeing it? Yep. All right. So this, I sent a. This is a direct response from a client. Right. She's never purchased anything from me before, but she is an avid CPT viewer. And she has downloaded probably six or 7,000 of my freebies. I swear. She <laughs> is a CPT beer and, and I just love her to death. So this is what she sent me back. Aileen. Hi, Cheryl. It's Aileen. <laughs> yes. And thanks so much for responding in the manner that you do. And I just want to tell you that I thank God for you. I thank God I stumbled upon you because I was in YouTube actually uh, trying to find uh, a business uh, a business phone um, service and I went across a couple of people and then all of a sudden your thing popped up and I was like okay let me see what she has to say regarding this and then it was more information that you have so talk about value and I am so glad I found you because I needed this and I needed it at this time, and God knows it. I'm not, I'm not very good at doing videos like this, but when you came on the video and said, I love to respond in this manner, but yes, I'm going to go dig deeper to see um, that the names that I've chosen, um, that they're available across every platform, but also I'm not going to jump over anything. I'm just going to go through the manuals as you have them structured because I want to make sure that when I do what I do, that it is well done as you have laid it out. So thank you so very much. I can't tell you from the depths of my heart how much I appreciate you and appreciate the fact that God sent me to you and vice versa. And again, once to you and like you always do, we I love you. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Wow. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> That's just one example, guys, of just making that small tweak and adding that extra hour to my week, the type of response. And and I can't even tell you what that does for my soul because 
Right. You guys know by Friday, sometimes you can have a week where you're like, I quit. I'm about to go work <laughs> at Speedway. Yeah. Right? You're like, you're like, after this week, I'd rather work at Speedway. And when you get those types of responses, it just helps rejuvenate and reactivate, you know, all the love. Um, and all the reason why you do what you do every single day. So just this simple process, I just went over with you, incorporating that into your life and just for a handful of clients and customers, it will get those types of video testimonials from the people um, that you that you are working with. So let's get to the wrapping this up because I want to make sure I can give you guys a chance to, to ask some questions. Right, right. We got to give them some links and stuff. Yep, so. yep. So, so you already saw the example. So I want to make sure you got your free gift too. So let's talk about this free gift. And this is where I want you to go to grab your 21 touch points. This is the 21 touch points that you need to potentially incorporate. We well, have to make sure that these 21 touch points are a part of your customer service processes, but you can also incorporate video into more than half of these touch points. So you want to go to CherylCPerez.com forward slash 21 touch points guide. Very quick and easy and simple. You go ahead and, 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 of course, give me your email. I'll email that over to you. And it's instant download. It's absolutely free for you. Absolutely free. Let me go back just so that you guys, we're going to put that link in the chat as well. So I don't need to go back link, to it, right? Link is in the chat, guys. Uh, you can't click the link. So just click the little thing and then click copy. And then you'll have the link on your clipboard. Perfect. And then let's just talk about the next steps. I mean, what are the next steps? My final thoughts. Um, just to recap where we are, right, and what we've been up to. Um, really, you need to become a customer-centric person. First thing that we talked about, right? You need to become more customer-centric if you're not already there. Also, use videos in your SOPs. It just makes it easier and it's more effective. I gave you guys five ways to add video to your customer service processes. You can pick one, two, or all of those things. I also gave you five steps to creating a customer-centric SOP. Right. I walked you through my 11 step onboarding process for one of my programs and I gave you an amazing free gift. So we have covered a lot today. Wow. Hopefully so you guys value. have gotten some value. There's several links, I think, in the chat for you guys. Um, one is obviously how you can access if you don't already have Dub, how you can access this amazing tool in order to be able to make it easy for you to incorporate. Um, also, the link to um, your free gift. And then I want to make sure that you guys have some time for final thoughts and questions. But I want you to also connect with me. So if you want to take a screenshot right there, that QR code will allow you to add me to your contacts. It will give you my direct email address. It will also give you access to all of my social, including my YouTube channel. You get a chance to go over there. It has 300 different videos on teaching you different processes, strategies, squad-related tips and tools, as well as structure-related tips and tools for your business. Uh, make sure that you like and subscribe and share. It helps for sure. And I can be found on all social as Cheryl C. Perez. On Facebook, I am at CCP Impact. That's the only one that's different because per my personal Facebook page is uh, Cheryl C. Perez and I could not figure out for the life of me how to fix it, guys. So um, on Facebook, my business page is at CCP Impact. I mean, you can totally request me as a friend personally, but all you're going to see is videos of my kids. Okay. That's what <laughs> You're not going to get the same value unless you, you know, you like my kids. I, I, I got, you know, six of them and two dogs. Ina, uh, can you place uh, her partner link here in the chat for us? Place CP's uh, partner link. Uh, we have we have the twenty one touch point there, and then that's that's the link for Dub. So yeah, make sure you guys click that one. If you're not already subscribed to Dub, click that link, guys. Sign up through there, and we'll we'll get you great taken care of every step of the way. You'll have one on one onboarding and customer support available to you. We uh we practice what we preach here, and um I was happy to see that some of the stuff uh CP taught us today I was like well even then I was like we can always go make it better and that's where I put in the chat I was like yeah we have we have an SOP it's it's documented and yeah we go revise it but could it always be better yeah so we, we'll we'll go take another look at all those things and um yeah no so so extremely valuable guys uh make sure you click that link and we'll get you taken care of if you need any support at all um by the way if you guys um need any support with dub specifically I just put a link in the chat there dub.com slash T. That's every single weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific. You are able to come get support with anything and everything dub and sales and marketing related. Um, just make sure you grab an account first through uh, CP's link there and then come meet us in the live training. We'll get you taken care of there. CP? Absolute oh, pleasure. actually, yeah, some questions really quick. Yeah, let's see, guys. Any, any questions? Absolute pleasure working with you guys today. I loved it. Love you.
Love you awesome. too, Coach Greg. Yeah, I know. We love yeah. your energy here. It was fantastic. Thank you, CB. Um, and guys, if you have questions uh, that, that come up later, you know, we all, we're all open them there on the chat. So come back and come talk to us. We'll also be sending the, the recording to those of you that, that weren't able to attend today and, and see the whole time. Um, but yeah, I know guys, definitely an opportunity to invest in yourself, in your business, in your customers. So uh, take advantage of it. Absolutely. And if you guys, I put my email in the chat as well directly, just in Great. case you couldn't grab the QR code. So you can shoot me an email if you come up with anything, because there's always lots of questions after you get home and you're sitting there, right? And you're thinking about it because there's no football on tonight. So you'll have lots of time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Thank you guys so much. Have Thank a good one. You. See you next time. Bye-bye.